Hello and thanks for joining us. It's been a while since many of us have been to the theatre or the opera, so today we have a treat for you. We're taking you to the ballet at the magnificent Opera Garnier in Paris to have a glimpse of a performance that's never been shown to the public. Olivia Salazar wins Spear reports. The Opera Garnier had just started to welcome back audiences now it's shuttered facade, a reminder that ballets and operas here have been suspended once again. Yet behind the scenes, work continues as directors, choreographers and dancers prepare the shows that had already been commissioned. One of them is a contemporary dance piece by Damien Jallet. Chacun a une partition un peu différente avec celui-là, mais dès qu'il y en a un qui, qui hésite un peu, on sent cette espèce de mouvement de côté. I was actually performing a show in Chaillot uh, in March and we had to cancel the last performance to have um, exactly the similar news of a lockdown just when we were about to premiere it has been a pretty tough one to, to, to get. It's a bit of a double feeling. I'm devastated in one way that this piece is not able to meet its audience. But at the same time, the timing of it and the fact that it happened right now, even though we didn't premiere it yet to an audience, we are at the stage where the piece is, is, is somehow completed. But what's been amazing is to be actually able to create and to develop this piece in a moment that is difficult. The title of this piece is Breakwater. That's a, a solid structure that holds firm against the movement of the water. I wondered if you were inspired by this object or did that title come afterwards? There's been waves in all of my work, but I think maybe I felt that this would be maybe the time to do a proper wave study. And uh, I like the title Brislam because it evokes the wave, but at the same time it also it evokes the, um, all these trees that somehow are you know, protecting the shore or that will receive the wave at first. Uh, it brings something that is both strong and vulnerable. That's something that talks about also resilience. Among the dancers, Eloise Bourdon, a soloist at the Opera Garnier. She's happy that the second lockdown allows for access to the ballet studios for classes and rehearsals, unlike the first time when she was stuck at home. Le fait que ça puisse naître d'une façon ou d'une autre, même si c'est sous une autre forme de, de diffusion, pour nous c'est déjà euh, du véritable plaisir. On peut aller en scène, euh, on partage euh, notre essoufflement, toute cette ambiance en fait, ne serait-ce que échanger avec nos collègues, être dans une énergie de, de spectacle, même s'il n'y a pas de public. Pour le premier confinement, en fait, l'Opéra nous a fourni des linots de, de danse, parce que on dansait en fait dans notre salon, où il y a, des fois il y a du parquet, des fois il y a du carrelage, ça dépend de là où tu habites. Mine de rien, même si les professeurs, justement, ils faisaient en sorte qu'on puisse faire des pas sur des, des mètres carrés restreints, Pour eux aussi, je pense que ça a été toute une réflexion. Getting this ballet staged has been an artistic and logistical challenge. The results finally broadcast on French television. And if you're watching in France, the full performance is being shown on France 5 this week. Theatres and other performance venues in France are still waiting for a date to reopen. If the health crisis is set to endure, some are finding ways to make the best of the situation, experimenting with different measures which would allow them to open and perform safely. Emerald Maxwell reports. Javier did what many thought impossible in the middle of a pandemic. In December, he attended a rock concert in Barcelona with no social distancing. It was, in fact, an experiment. 
Javier was one of 500 spectators who all had to take a COVID test before attending. Y aquest era el QR per entrar al, al concert. Aquí hi havia els resultats de, PCR. de les PCRs, que eren els dos, els dos verds, els dos negatius. Audience members were also made to change mask. Mira, aquesta, aquesta és la mascareta que, que ens van donar quan vam entrar al concert. És una FFP2. Eight days later, the results were in. Not one participant had been infected. It's a promising result amid the uncertainty of the months ahead. I don't know how many people will be vaccinated, I don't know how many people will pass the disease. So what we can do is to try to predict the future. But what we can do is to try to put in place measures to be able to return to an activity. Paris's Philharmonic Orchestra, meanwhile, tried something else. With 3D engineers, they created a model of the pandemic that they could not have seen in the past. With 3D engineers, they created a model of the concert hall, studying the impact of airflow on the spread of the virus from an infected spectator. Some of their results were surprising. Spontanément, tout le monde, euh, avec un réflexe de bon sens, a tendance à dire il faut ventiler très fort. Mais euh, si on diminue la ventilation de 50% dans cette salle, l'air a tendance à se concentrer sur des zones de la salle où il n'y a pas de spectateurs, par exemple les escaliers. The results are only valid for this particular theatre, and the simulation would have to be repeated for different venues. But both these experiments and a similar one in Leipzig have given a little hope to show organisers. The American rock band The Flaming Lips have come up with a creative way to put on live shows in the midst of COVID-19, putting themselves and their audience in protective space bubbles. The group performed two concerts over the weekend in Oklahoma, where audience members danced along while enclosed in plastic bubbles. Let's find out some more with Ellen Gainsford. This is social bubbling taken to the extreme. These concert goers are all separated from each other in private spheres. So they can enjoy the music without worrying about the coronavirus. It might not be easy to dance in the bubbles, but no one has to wear a mask. And the Flaming Lips lead singer can even crowd surf. The organizers have thought of every detail, including bathroom breaks. Once inside the space bubble, you will see and hear your in-bubble high-frequency supplement speaker. There is a sign to show the attendants that you have to pee. And they will assist you getting out and getting back in your space bubble. The fans are loving the gig, but the logistics might be tricky to replicate in other venues. A hundred bubbles fill up the space, and there's only enough oxygen for an hour and ten minutes. One of Paris's top cultural attractions, the Pompidou Centre, is set to close for four years of renovations. The building, which is home to Europe's biggest modern art collection, will shut down at the end of 2023 and reopen in 2027 in time for its 50th anniversary. Alexander Ocott reports. This inside-out design with ventilation, plumbing and other structural systems on the surface have made it one of Paris's most recognisable monuments. And as the Pompidou Centre approaches its 50th birthday, covered in scaffolding, the director of the museum says the building is in distress. French culture minister Rosaline Bachelot had been presented with two options. A partial closure for seven years or a full shutdown for three. She opted for the latter, saying it will also work out cheaper. The building was designed by two then-unknown British-Italian architects, Richard Rogers and Renzo Piano. Opening in 1977, it immediately polarised opinion, before becoming a victim of its own success. Designed to handle 8,000 visitors a day, it soon achieved five times as many and has been hailed for transforming the way museums and elite buildings are viewed by the public. The substantial maintenance will include fixing outer pipes, repairing escalators and asbestos removal, and is set to cost in excess of 200 million euros. And finally, if werewolves and witches, or worse, are your thing, we'll leave you with an international festival of horror and science fiction films. 
The Gérard May Festival will bring creepy chills to your home this time because it's online this year until the end of January. Scary movies from Canada, France, Sweden and South Korea are among those available. Thanks for watching. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.